So what we did was very briefly try to work with a little bit of custom HTML and CSS. As I said, this is this is just the tip of the tip of the iceberg. <clears throat> Changing this background color <clears throat> was relatively obvious because we were in the footer file, and um, this is content in the footer. And as I then said, well, we're going to write style equals background color. And that's one of the many commands of CSS available to us. If you do look at the uh, CSS section of W3Schools, there will be all of these chapters on, on everything, on how to do anything, basically, with CSS. There's a section here under background, CSS backgrounds, and it explains everything. How to build a background color, an image in the background, all of these extra features. Like this picture behind this box, that was done via CSS. So it goes on to show you. I like this site because it shows you examples and then it says try it yourself. There's always a way to try it yourself where it'll show you here's this code, make a change and see how it applies. So if I go here, pink, and I usually, when I give examples, I usually write pink and people say, why do you always choose pink? And I say, well, it's easiest to type with one hand. <laughs> So is red. You can also type red with one hand. And it's not exactly CSS, but there's also erase, the erase command. Just for fun, does anyone know the longest word in English that you can type with one hand on a standard American keyboard? <laughs> what is steward? That says stewardesses with with one hand on the keyboard. So you and everyone's gonna try it. <laughs> right or left hand? That was left hand. So W three schools is is cool because you can work with it live. Now for us, I directed you to the right place to make that change, and we edited the PHP. This is the confusing thing about HTML, where I said in my notes, well, PHP is going to be about the behavior and such. PHP is kind of powerful enough, robust enough, that it also edits the structure of content. So even though we're in a footer PHP file, we actually edit HTML. That's what we're seeing here. This was HTML and CSS. So it is kind of mixed together. Um, and what we did here was a very direct edit, and it, it got the job done. I can still do some more. Like, I don't like that it's so tight up against my letters. There's no breathing room between my text and my color. But I want to be able to change other things, like, where do I change the color of this? I want to change that from, uh, from black to, to yellow, or I want to center it. Or let's say this post comment button, I like it, but actually I want rounded corners. Well, where do I go in my code to do that? That's always the complicated thing. If it's not an obvious structural change, like in the footer or in the comments, then oftentimes it's an edit that we need to accomplish in the catch-all file style sheet. As a matter of fact, when you first open the editor, I'm going to go elsewhere and then come back to editor. When you first open the editor, the first thing that, you, that it lets you edit or suggests is the style sheet file. Here's the current theme. There's the current file that we're editing. So if I go over to the template file, it says you're in the 2015 theme and you're editing the 404 template file, the 404 PHP. So when you first go to the editor, it says here's the CSS, the style.css file. Usually that's what we need to do. We need to edit this file. But when we were looking at the footer file, notice the scroll bar of the editor here is not that long. It's not a lot to edit in the footer. But if you look at the CSS file, stylesheet.css, 
Uh, that's a lot of code. Look at how that scroll bar is. That's a lot of code. Literally, that's probably 2,000 lines of code. Because this is what's going to edit many, many, many more aspects of your site. The good news is that many of the things that you want to edit in your site are centralized in this file. The bad thing is that many of the things you want to edit in the site are centralized in this file because there's 2,000 lines of code here, and what's the right line of code to edit? So before I answer that, we're going to switch gears slightly. We're not done talking about editing the site. It's still a discussion I want to have, but I'm going to talk about plugins, specifically a plugin that will help us edit our code more efficiently. So let's put a pin on that, and we'll hold off for the moment. Most of the time, we'll be doing our our site edits in the style.css file. But in order for us to edit this more efficiently, we need a plugin. Any questions before we change gears for plugins? Anything about editing the site in general? So we'll get back to more editing um, regarding the site and the code and such. And one thing I also will mention is, is child themes, because here's the unfortunate thing regarding making any changes here. <clears throat> These changes might not be as permanent as you think. What does this little number mean here again? There's one update. There's one update. And up there it tells me there's two updates. Well, I'm editing, if you changed anything in this screen, you're editing the original files of your theme to customize them, which is what I want. But then, if a brand new version of the theme is available, if the WordPress team puts out a brand new version 2 of, of 2015, or let's say I bought that Canyon theme and they put out a brand new version, version 006, if I choose to update my theme, <clears throat> it will erase all my edits. And that's obviously pretty bad, because I spent a lot of time crafting my code to make my site perfect, and the theme is just going to delete it all? Yes, the nature of it, this is just the way it is, that if you do any update <clears throat> on, on plugins, but especially themes, what's going to happen is your site will connect back to the WordPress mothership and download the latest version, the, the most latest ver uh, current updated secure versions of your theme. And therefore it's going to erase any changes you had on your theme because it's the, it's the newest version. Child themes then are a way to protect against that. We'll talk about it later. But child themes are a way for us to write our code in a separate file, a child file, and then, therefore, when we update the theme, the parent is updated, and it doesn't affect your edits in the child. And you get all the benefits of your parent theme update, and without the big negative of losing your, your edits, because they're in the child theme. That takes a little bit of setup, which we'll look at, um, but just be aware of that. When you make any changes to your parent theme files, they will get erased when you do updates. It's better to do child themes. But we'll get back to that. Editing the code a little bit more, talking about child themes, but I want to talk about some plugins because one of the plugins will help you in that process of editing. So let's click on the plugins link. To go to the plugins screen. We have three plugins. Two active, one deactivated, and one that needs an update. So again, imagine this were themes. And I just made a bunch of themes in 20 bunch of edits in 2015, and now there's an update. All the edits would go away. We don't really worry about that with plugins though. There's no child plugins, just child themes. But here we've got a Kismet, which I'm not sure if I mentioned it much, but this is a plugin to help you help prevent spam. 
spam comments. Duplicator, obviously, is the plugin that we've been using to make a backup of our site. And WP eCommerce is what gives us the ability to sell products. I'm going to mention a few more plugins that I highly recommend. These are plugins that usually my company applies to every client because they're so useful. And again, I usually try to provide you with the free re as many re free resources as possible. And these are going to be free, but some of them might have little extras that you pay for to get more functionality. So here's one of them first that I'll mention. This one's going to sound boring. It's going to sound boring, but I'll explain it's very useful. Let's do this. Under the plugins screen, click on Add New. And we've got featured plugins, popular plugins, recommended, and favorites. So featured, a few featured plugins. On the right side, click search plugins, and we'll search for a plugin called redirection. Redirection. Search it and then press enter. And you should get a result near the top, hopefully the first one. It's got like some flowers. Redirection. What this plugin is, is it helps you uh, manage and fix broken links in your site. One of the aspects of search engine optimization is that you don't have broken links. So let's say I built the best e-commerce site for some reason something happens and some of my links are broken. The search engines are gonna look at that. Google, Bing, Yahoo, etc. They're gonna look at your site and then they're gonna keep track of many 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 aspects of your site. And One of the things they keep track of is broken links because the search engines the, re the way you get to the top 10 results is by following many many tactics, many best practices and one of the best practices is no broken links because good websites that deserve to be ranked highly don't have broken links. So even if you have a great design and great content, one of the things that might hurt your ranking is that you have broken links. This plugin then will track your broken links and better yet, help you fix them. It's a free plugin. It's been updated one day ago, so it's very current. It's got over it's got nearly half a million installations. And it's got four stars out of five with 168 um, reviews. I mentioned previously it's important to look at the star rating and the number of installs and the number of reviews. That way you can tell is this the right one for me? Like this one that's got higher stars, has less installations and less reviews. This one seems to have perfect star, perfect five stars, but it's got like 10% of the number of installs, and it's got more than 140 less reviews. Okay, so let's click on Install Now on the Redirection plugin. going to connect to the WordPress mothership and then download and install, successfully installed, and then what's next? Activate. activate. We have to remember to activate the plugins. So go ahead and activate this plugin. As I said previously with plugins, there doesn't seem to be any sort of consensus on how to install a plugin. That is, where the developers choose to install a plugin. You'll always be able to see a list of all of your plugins in the plugin screen. But then besides that, this is going to vary. Where did it get installed in my interface? In this case, under the Tools menu, so if you hover over Tools, you'll see a brand new item called Redirection. How would you know that? Um, I think there would be a setting. It would tell you some place that that's where it's at, but it depends on the plugin. Some of them tell you, find this item in the tools. Some of them don't. So under tools, we have redirection. The way this plugin works, 
is it monitors your site for broken links. And when there's a broken links, a broken link, then what we do is we create a redirection. We say if someone is trying to let me show you like this. Let's say someone is trying to visit my site, victor.com slash contact us. So that's, that's the name of the contact page, let's say. But then someone is, is trying to visit our site with contacts. That's going to be a broken link. Because if someone tries to visit my site slash contacts and that page does not exist, it's a broken link. The real link is contact-us. So redirection, the plugin, keeps a list of all of the traffic of broken links. It'll say 20 people visited victor.com slash contacts. Okay, well the plugin will tell me that under 404s right here, these are broken links. So if this was a real live site, this would give me a list of all of the links that people are trying to access that are broken. Well, that's not the half of it. That's not the important part. The important part is to fix those links. So once you have a broken link, it doesn't have it at the moment because there's no broken links, but there's going to be a button at the bottom that says Add Redirection, mean, basically meaning fix the broken link. And the broken link fixer will, will look basically like what's on the redirects screen. The redirect screen looks like this. Source URL match target. So this, this will fill itself in once it starts collecting data. But imagine, under the 404 link, there was a broken link that kept popping up. Contacts. So the new redirection here would say slash contacts. And so people are trying to go to contacts and contacts doesn't work. So we're going to say actually people should be going to slash contact dash us add redirection. That's it. There's other options there but the defaults work fine. But here's the concept. Someone's trying to go to the wrong link, redirect them to the right link. Save it and now when people try to go to the wrong link including the search engines, they'll go to the right link. No more broken links happy search engines, good SEO results. Under the redirect screen. Oh. Okay. Yes, question. How often do you keep all, uh, going to another you know, subdomain though? You keep the to the main um, URL. Yes, that's why, uh, that was just an example. Um, that's why you really want to pay attention to your 404 screen. That's the one that's going to tell you these are the links that are, that are being broken. I just chose one at random. But um, you want to look at this maybe once a month um, at the most. Go to that screen and see what are the links that people are going to that are broken. That way you know exactly what to fix. So, so the 404s, four, four uh, it's going to tell us like um, that all those broken links that people mm -hmm. are trying to go to. And then That's we just right. add them, redirect them, add those broken links. We just yeah, we fix the broken link. We tell it this is broken, but this is the right one. And there's more advanced things under groups and modules and such, but those are the two things you need to care about. 404s tell you your broken links, and redirects let you fix them. Again, boring plugin, but very useful, especially if you care about ranking well on the search engines, because the search engines care that you don't have broken links. Speaking of contact us, uh, we don't have a contact page. And now I'm going to mention a plugin that I like for creating nice contact pages, powerful contact pages. Um, this is one that I've uh, used for a long time. It's, it's pretty uh, powerful, relatively simple and of course free. So if you go back to plugins, add new, 
search. I'm going to search for a plugin called Contact Form 7. The result that I'm looking for should be contact form 7. It's got a little picture of Mount Fuji. And uh, it's a contact form generating plugin. And it's one month old, compatible with our version, 766 um, stars, four and a half stars, very good, and over a million active installs. So it's a very popular plugin. Contact Form 7, go ahead and click Install Now. Remember to activate it. And this is a plugin that it gives you a brand new menu item. Look at that, now we've got Contact. A brand new little menu item with a with a, with a with, a, with an envelope, contact. Go ahead and click on contact. Okay, so This is a very cool plugin. It's it's also uh, pretty robust. Um, and under contact forms here, under the contact screen, um, there's a message here to donate. And there's some links on getting started, how it all works in more detail. We'll look at it in general. And then other other particular things, how to set this up with Google Analytics. So here's how you can track via Google Analytics how well your contact form is uh, is working for people. So um, I would I would read those on on your own at some point. And then here you can have as many contact forms as you want. You can create a different contact form for a different screen to collect different amounts of data and such. Uh, so what we'll do is for this built-in contact form one, if you hover your mouse over it, we see edit and duplicate. Let's click on duplicate just so that we have that original example. I don't want to edit the original example. Hover over contact form one and select duplicate. That gives us at the top here contact form one copy. Now this this plugin and many like it are not going to give you something like a like a drag and drop interface uh, because notice it says right near the top copy this short code and paste it into your post page or a text widget so basically to add this contact form to any screen of your site you have to just copy and paste this line of code before we do that we see how it's how it looks and how it's designed. We've got a tab for form, mail, message, additional settings. Then the form itself is a little bit of HTML code. It's pretty readable because it says your name, which is required. So this is asking for the person. A person is filling this in, and it's asking for their name. It's going to ask them, "What's your name?" and it's going to accept a text box named your name. It's going to ask them for their email. It's, a, it's an email box called your email. It's going to ask them for a subject. They should write a subject and it's text and it's named your subject. And then a box for their message and the box is a text area and it's called your message. And then finally, a button that says Submit, a Submit button that says Send. So again, it's not as drag and drop. It's not going to be pretty buttons that you organize. 
It's a little bit of code, but it has over a million installations, so they must be doing something right. That's why you've got the documentation, frequently asked questions, and support. How exactly does it work? Because you can add a box for them to put their telephone number in. So right here, add to the form a telephone box. Add a date. Add a drop-down menu and check boxes. Add a quiz. Add a way for them to send you a file. And if you know any HTML or CSS, you can add that within this as well. This is going to be a simple kind of form, but if you want to make it more powerful, you, um, you can use HTML and CSS. There's a form tab at the top, and then there's a mail tab. The mail tab is where are you going to send the results of this form to, or to who? If you look at mail, this is going to send this, when someone fills this out, it's going to send it to, by default, it's the, it's the name of the administrator of the site that we set under settings. But this can be anything you want. You can set this to more than one person. Let's say I'm going to send it to Victor and then comma john at victor.com and comma sally at victor.com. So you can send the results of this contact form to more than one person just by adding the next email separated with a comma. And so, who's it coming from, what's their subject, and what's their message? All of that comes from the boxes under form. Under form, it asks for the person's name. It was called your name. It asks for their subject. It was called your subject. See right here? It's asking for your name, and it was called your name. It's asking for a subject, and it was called your subject. And therefore, here under the mail, the subject is going to automatically be filled in. This is the subject of the email. This is the name of the person in the email, and it's the, um, the their their message. So you usually don't need to edit most of the defaults. Under messages, here's these various messages, error messages or successful messages that, that are built in, or you can change. You can change it into different languages, you can change it into different verbiage, and you can say this is, uh, instead of it saying your message was sent successfully, thanks. You can have it say something like uh, message sent, we will get back to you shortly. Additional settings are advanced stuff you don't need to work, you don't need to worry about. So I'm going to click save at the bottom. I made a couple of changes. If I wanted to use this, I've developed the contact form, but I haven't used it. If I want to use it, I need to copy this line of code here. and paste it somewhere. Uh, we don't have a contact us page, so we'll create one. But if we had a page or a sidebar or anywhere, we can copy this code and add it to our site. So I'm going to copy that, and then under Pages, I'm 
under pages we will add new title we'll call that contact us and then I will paste that code that it gave me I just needed a page, a page I called contact us. I pasted that short code it gave me. You can get a sense of what it looks like when you press preview on the top right. Here's my form. Your name required, your email required, the subject, your message, send. I didn't fill anything in, so it gave me the error. Validation errors occurred. Obviously, I can change that to make it sound nicer. We might not be able to fully test that uh, contact form because we're on a test server. It's not on a real server that's capable of sending messages, perhaps. But this is the f this is the contact form plugin that I would use, that I would recommend. That is, and that we do use all the time with clients. Yeah, I don't think it's going to fully work because we're on a testing server, but when it's on a live server, it should work. So there was the contact. Many questions on that. Okay, so let me show you then uh, two other ones that are related. Um, let's say we've taken all of this time to learn some WordPress, to learn about e-commerce. We've got a great website. It's up there. Lots of good products and such. Um, how do we know if we're getting traffic to our site? How do we know if people are navigating our site properly? How do we know if my tweets are directing people to my site or not? That's when the webmaster tools of the search engines come in. If you take my SEO class, in there we talk about connecting your site directly to the search engines so that they can track your site, give you statistics and data, give you suggestions on improving your site and such. And one of the popular ways is to use something called Google Analytics. How many of you before this class had, have heard of Google Analytics? Raise your hand. Almost everyone here. If you haven't, that's a free tool that Google gives us to keep track of our traffic, where our traffic is coming from, uh, lots of information. What the most popular mobile phone that someone uses to visit your site is, um, the time of the day that's most popular, the city, lots of data. And once we know that data, that can help us in our, in our future strategies for social media, for optimizing the site, for redesigning the site, etc. And so there's a plugin that will pretty easily help us link 
um, our website, our WordPress website, with Google Analytics. It's one that I highly recommend. So go over to Plugins, Add New. Under Search, we'll search for a plugin called Yoast. Rhymes with Toast, so Y-O-A-S-T, Yoast, Google Analytics. Let's search for the plugin Yoast Google Analytics. Y-O-A-S-T, Yoast, and um, you should see, let's see, Oh, the funny thing, it's not near the top, actually. You have to scroll down. On the right side, eventually, you will see an icon that looks like a, you know, a little green square with arrows going up. And it's by the company called Team Yoast. So notice all the plugins have a description and who was this developed by. As we've mentioned before, most plugins and themes don't come from the official WordPress company, they come from third-party developers. Uh, there's a robust economy of, of extra WordPress stuff, plugins and themes. And here's one of them, Google Analytics by Yoast. Four stars out of 322 reviews and over a million active installations. So this is another one that I highly recommend. Go ahead and click Install Now. And activate. One caveat, this is a great plugin, but one caveat is I don't believe it works very effectively on WAMP or MAMP or Bitnami or any of those. Obviously, because you don't have a real website. When you're on WAMP, or MAMP, etc., you're on localhost. Only you can access your website, not Google, not your visitors. No one can access your website except you sitting on your computer. So at the moment, this plugin won't do very much because it just can't connect you. It can't connect your site with Google. Just your site is not live, it's not online. But imagine that the site really was victorsbakery.net or amazingwebdesigns.com or whatever, that it was a real website online. Imagine that. Once you have that set up, you have a brand new item up on top here, analytics. You have this new icon with a dashboard and settings. Well, once it's a real live site, you need to go to your settings, and there's a pretty basically simple process of connecting your site with Google Analytics. It'll walk you step by step. We won't be able to do it here, number one, because you need a Google Analytics account. And number two, you need a site that's live on the internet. But once you've got it live, you go to this screen and click Authenticate. Click on that. It'll ask you for your password. It'll go through steps. Click Save. You're connected. And then your dashboard is going to start to show you all of this great data. Where is your traffic coming from? On what days? How long has someone visited your site? And that's what the professionals do. That's what my company does for clients. We need to know, is, it, is this working? Are our efforts working? Did that social media work? Did the update to make the site simpler work? What are the most popular pages? What are the most unpopular pages? Once we have all of this information, we can make marketing decisions such as let's spend more time and effort on Facebook because it's working for us really well. Analytics is telling us you get a lot of traffic from Facebook. Maybe Analytics is telling us this blog post isn't getting any traffic. Well that's gonna tell us we should advertise it more on social media. We should send it out via email to get traffic. We wouldn't have known that unless we have some sort of, market, uh, some sort of analytics tool 
to do strategies of marketing. At the moment, this is all we can really do. We can just install it. We can't really set it up because you need an account and you need to be live. And it seems to have something called e-commerce tracking, an extra feature of Yoast that will track sales and all of that, $49. So it's got these extra features. You can get their ebook for $19. Any questions on this plugin? Uh, that's coming up right now. No. They have them separate for some reason. You have to have the separate plugins, but I recommend them both. So the other side of this coin. There's Yoast Analytics, and here's the other plugin, also by Yoast. If we go back to Plugins, Add New, this time we'll search for Yoast SEO. Yoast SEO. This is the other side of the coin to check analytics. In that, okay, Google Analytics plugin is going to help us track how well our traffic is, but that's just one aspect of search engine optimization, one, one part of the art and the science and the magic of getting traffic to your site, SEO. It's a big topic and I teach a class on it as it happens. So here the Yoast SEO plugin should be this one right here with a with the stoplights. It's also by Team Yoast. It also has more than a million installations and it almost has perfect five stars with 1,469 ratings. Let's install it and activate it. Once you install it, for me at least, it's telling me right away some messages right here, such as this big scary one that says, you still have the default WordPress tagline. Even an empty one is probably better. Oh, so it's telling me already tips for SEO. You can fix it here. You don't need to fix it, but this is going to tell me some messages. These are things you should do to improve your site so that the search engines can find it. And there's going to be a tour. You can look at that on your own later. What I want to look at is, let's go to the posts screen. This is the big selling point of, uh, of Yoast SEO. It's going to analyze every page, every post, every product, and give you a rating that will tell you, is this optimized poorly, or good, or medium, and so forth? Because again, SEO, that's a whole topic, that's a whole month-long class. I, I, recommend take my SEO class because you've got an amazing website and no one's going to it probably because you haven't thought about SEO techniques search engine optimization this plugin helps you with that it doesn't do it all for you it helps you for example um, here I'm looking at these blog posts author categories tags date SEO that's brand new that little SEO column <coughs> with that gray circle. The gray circle means you haven't uh, you haven't analyzed, Yoast hasn't analyzed your page yet. Um, let's say this recipe of the of the month we want Yoast to analyze it. So the way it works is we need to edit a post or a page and in the post or page scroll down and you will see a brand new section Yoast SEO we don't have a we don't have a lot of time and this is not the class to really go into with this in detail but this 
plugin will will help you add more optimization to every page of your site. So there's a brand new Yoast um, box, but also at the top right under the publish box, do you see there's SEO? Check it. So if you go back to the top right, you'll see publish and then SEO check. If you click check, well, it says, first of all, there's no focus keyword set. If you do not set a focus keyword, no score can be calculated. So under general, again, you, you should explore this on your own or take my SEO class. But in this screen here, we say, okay, this is what it's going to look like on a Google search or Bing or Yahoo, which is not very good. Um, when you look at results on, on the search engines, you see a nice preview text. This one's very basic. So you can edit how your listing on the search engines looks by editing the SEO title and the SEO meta description. So for example, if I if I set here SEO title key lime pie recipe. That's how it's going to show up on a Google search in the description. I have 156 characters. People ask how long should my description be? Here it is. And this plugin will change when Google changes, because it used to be like 165 characters. They took away 10 to make it more concise. So a, a plugin like this will always keep you on track. But I can write something like um, read our easy to follow five step key lime pie recipe. It's a classic recipe from our grandma. So you see what I'm typing here is going to appear on your search engine result. Very important because people make a decision of what to click on based on that. And the search engines make a decision on how to rank you by this and other factors. So I have 65 characters left. I can decide if that's enough or write as much as I can there, up to 65 characters more, to get found. The focus keyword would be what's the main topic of this page? Key lime pie. I'm starting to write key lime pie recipe. And as I type, I might get a pop-up below of suggestions. If you get suggestions, I would take them. Mine, mine is not showing me suggestions, but if you get suggestions, I would take those suggestions because those are real life, real live searches that are happening that might help you get found. I'm not getting suggestions, so I'm going to continue my idea. Key lime pie recipes. I have to think about what are people searching for? Are they searching for recipes? Well, that could give you recipes for lasagna. No, they're searching for key lime pie recipes. Are they searching for pie recipes, easy to bake pie recipes? So this focus keyword is like what people would search for. Key lime pie recipes. And now that I added a focus keyword and I update my page, it can then analyze my page and say, you've got bad SEO. Well, why? It tells you right here, step by step, do this, don't do that, you miss this. So you see this is, this is coupled together. You, you fill out the general screen a little bit and save it, and it tells you, oh, you're not using this keyword on your page title, etc., etc. You didn't write key lime pie recipes. Actually, uh, key lime pie recipe. So if I change that, now my SEO is poor, which is better than bad. It goes, 
it goes, I believe it goes gray, no analysis, red, bad SEO, orange, poor SEO, I think then there's yellow, which is good SEO, and green, which is great SEO. The more yellows and greens you get, the better. The more good and great you get, the better. Because yes, you do need to do this on all your posts and all your pages. I've done this so far on only one. Twelve more to go. And it seems like a lot of work. But yes, you want to rank highly, don't you? You want to follow the, the techniques, the good techniques to get ranked. Because nowadays that's how people find your site. They don't take out that phone book anymore. They do a search on their computer, their laptop, their phone. If you've got one of these fancy new phones, you can ask it, what's a good Italian food restaurant nearby, and it'll check the internet and give you results. Well, those keywords, if I think about that and add those keywords to my site, that's how I get found. That's how I get analyzed. And this is a whole topic, a whole month-long topic. So this is just a tiny little bit to think about, but this plugin, Yoast SEO, is a highly useful, famous, powerful plugin to help you craft positive SEO results because now it analyzed. You've used it in your page title, you've used it in your meta description. If I further see my page analysis, it says there's only two words in your document. You need more. You haven't used your keyword in your first paragraph. Your page title has 19 characters, but you should go with a recommended of 40. You haven't added any H tags like heading 2. So those are that and many more are the secrets to getting found on the search engines. And this plugin takes you through there, through that path, but really my class or other blogs and such will give you more insight. Any questions on the Yoast SEO plugin? Okay, one more plugin. This is a very powerful one, very famous one. I like it a lot. Let's go back to plugins. And actually, it's or install new plugin, add new plugin. Go back to add new plugin. And actually, it's so popular that it's one of the featured plugins right here. You don't even have to search it. It'll probably appear. It's the Jetpack plugin. It's got a little spaceman. It's by Automatic, which is actually the parent company of WordPress. So this is an official WordPress plugin updated four weeks ago. Four star, 721 reviews, over a million installations. And what this is, is like a super plugin. It gives you so many extra features, totally for free. Um, if you've ever made a website at WordPress.com, you will see there you have some features that our WordPress does not have. Our self-hosted WordPress. Our self-hosted WordPress does not have some features that come built into WordPress.com. But guess what? Jetpack activates those features to your site. So I'll look over a few of them, but go ahead and install now. Once it installs, of course, activate it. And now you have uh, a brand new menu item near the top called Jetpack. It used to actually look like a jetpack. Now it looks like a very ab abstract, weird shape. But if you hover over jetpack and go to settings, you need a little bit of setting first. So 
you go to Jetpack Settings. And so there's all of these features, extra features. Some of them are not active until you have a live site. Notice at the top it says, you're in development mode. <coughs> it sees that you don't have a .com or .net or .org or whatever, .mx. Uh, you're in development mode. It sees that you're on localhost. So some of these sub-features of Jetpack won't work. Uh, I'll mention a few of these briefly. Um, there's, for example, um, mobile theme. Let's say you have a theme in WordPress that um, is really nice but for some reason is not mobile friendly. It's very important nowadays for your site to be mobile friendly. The search engines really recommend it, that your site looks really nice on a mobile device. So if your WordPress theme doesn't look nice on a mobile device, all you have to do is select this sub plugin, this option of Jetpack, and activate it. Don't activate it because our, we do have a mobile friendly theme. But let's say you didn't have a mobile friendly theme. You just activate this and now your site is mobile friendly. That's it. You don't have to recode your site. It's mobile friendly. Um, let's see, sharing, okay, sharing is another good one. Um, sharing is uh, the ability for you to add uh, a button for Twitter on your posts, a button to share on Facebook, a button to share on Pinterest. <coughs> so notice on any of these you can click the name to give you a, an explanation. If you click on the name of sharing, share your post via Twitter, etc. You can configure services, some services have additional options, and you're able to connect Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, Dig, LinkedIn, Google, plus print an email. Oh, so here's a quick way to let people print your posts, email your products to each other. And that's by activating the sharing feature of Jetpack. There's many other cool features that are not that are not activatable. Um, for example, monitor. This will monitor your site, and whenever your site crashes, you'll get an email. Whenever it goes down, you'll get an email. It'll then tell you you'll get another email when your site is back up. So monitor is useful. Obviously, we cannot activate it because it's not on a real website yet. But once we've gone to the point of adding a real website and activate monitor, it's pretty useful. You'll get notifications about the health the status of your site. Photon is another useful one that I recommend. This speeds up your site because it then uh, copies your pictures to, to a, a new server online, meaning that whenever someone visits your site and you've got a bunch of pictures, a person visits your site and they have to wait for the pictures to download. Well, if you activate Photon, your pictures are automatically ad added to a fast server so that people can see your picture faster. And therefore, they can download your site or connect to your site faster. 
protect is another good option that will protect you from people trying to log in. You can still click on them even though you can't activate. Protect is a cloud-powered brute force attack prevention tool. So basically it's going to help prevent people from trying to hack into your site. That's an option that's very useful, but again you can't use it until you go live. The cool thing is that once this is on a live real site and you visit Jetpack link here, it'll suggest you right away turn these on. There's a bunch of options. You don't need all options, but the most common and popular ones, once you go to the Jetpack screen of Jetpack, it'll say, turn these on for performance and security, turn these on for traffic and growth. So there's about 30 possible items there, but you don't need you don't need them all. And here, they've made it easier nowadays on the main Jetpack screen to tell, to show you. You might want this, you might want that. There's something called Carousel, Image Carousel, which gives you even more interesting slideshow options. Remember when we added products and stuff to the site, we had basic ways to add pictures. Well, here's an image carousel that we can activate to give us more features, more customization, like tiled photo galleries. I'm sorry, but which one, but which one under the jetpack will give us an image carousel? Well, the one that says image carousel. Um, that's the link? No, but it says here, see so the see other 27 project. features, and then when you're there, there'll be one somewhere over here that says carousel. Carousel, yeah, right there. Oh, yeah, one. Mm -hmm. And then near the bottom there's also one called tiled galleries. I think that's another good way to show your pictures like that. And carousel is really cool because it'll it'll take your small thumbnails and then make them nice and big and full screen and it'll automatically do next picture, previous picture, so forth. So Jetpack um, is like a plugin with sub-plugins. It has all these extra features that if you've used WordPress.com before, you already know about them. You've already used them, probably. And then when you move on to your own self-hosted WordPress like this, you're like, where's that publicize button? Where's my carousels? Well, you get those via this free plugin. Contact Form 7. This contact form is a little basic. Contact Form 7, I think, is more powerful. So, one of the ones that I want to activate right now, then we'll take a break, which will then take us back to editing the site is this here, custom CSS. This is their step toward the question that was earlier, what if we edit our code? Is there a way to revert to it? Here is a way to do that, but only with CSS. So it's better than nothing, and it has other features. So let's activate the custom CSS module, the custom CSS feature of Jetpack. Then we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll edit the, the code of our site a little bit more, the style of our site a little bit more, talk about child themes and other things, and then we're getting close to the end of the day. So it's 3.10. Let's take a 10-minute break. We'll be back at 3.20, and we'll proceed.